Now, back to Access Tech Live, the latest in tech and accessibility with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. Hey everyone, welcome back to Access Tech Live. I am Stephen Scott with Mark Aflalo this week. And uh, also, you know, uh, you know, photography is a huge area of interest as well as all the tech we talk about. Photography is something that everybody loves. Everyone enjoys taking pictures, especially of their face, Mark. People love taking <laughs> pictures of their face. Uh, but did you know that blind people also enjoy photography too? They do. And you know what? It's interesting because Lawrence Gunther, who's a conservationist and a friend of the show, uh, reached out to me last week and brought a, an interesting story to my attention. Now, Lawrence is coming up a bit later on in the show. But before we get to him, I want to introduce you to our next guest. His name is Matthew Faulkner. He's the marketing director for Wide Format Group for Canon. Uh, Matthew, number one, welcome to Access Tech Live. Thank you for being here. Can you can you please tell us more about this project called Canon's World Unseen? Because it is absolutely astonishing to me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the invitation to be here, Mark and, and Stephen. It's good to meet you. So Will Done Seen is a, is a Canon project that's based around, I suppose you could say it's Canon's philosophy of, um, we, we believe that imaging has the ability to transform the world. And particularly imaging can be a, an incredible, powerful storyteller, both from everyday subjects, but also things that are a bit more extraordinary. And Will Done Seen came about really because of our view that we believe that everybody should be able to enjoy and experience imaging and not only the sighted. So we, we're using and created an exhibition from a, a whole series of world-renowned photographers um, using an elevated printing technique. Uh, we're able to create a textured photography and imaging that enables people to experience imaging through 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 touch it's quite fascinating when you talk about this because it, it does kind of go against the grain just a little bit doesn't it that you know of course people think about photography they think of it as a visual thing but of course it can be something that blind people can enjoy too you're of course, giving people that experience through tactile touch. Uh, how did that part come about? Because, it, like I say, it doesn't automatically uh, go together, does it? No, absolutely, yeah. It's, it's, it's not so obvious. And I think if I can touch on the technology, because it's that element that really helps us to, to bring this to life. And I think we, we use a technology which we call a flatbed printer, uh, which is a very large device, you know, a production device for... It's normally used for creating signage and display graphics and point of sale. And I think many years ago, one or two creative and clever customers of ours realized that if you repeatedly print the same job on top of each other, then you create a textured surface. The, the ink is a UV cured ink, so it's very hard. So printing repeated layers enable them to kind of a trick to create a texture. And I think when our R&D guys saw this some years ago, we were inspired to think about how we could use this to create a tactile surface. And we then created some software, which has been through a number of you know, iterations. It's now called Prisma Elevate. But this software enables you to create the, the tactile surface in a way that enables somebody to really experience an image in the right way and for it to be able to to tell those powerful stories or, or to communicate. So I, I suppose it was uh, serendipitous that, you know, so some of our customers had been experimenting and from that came this ability for us to be able to create some really amazing ways to use imagery to communicate. Matthew, is this, is this technique and this technology always intended for the accessibility side of things? Or was it something else that's adapted and we've said, oh, wait a second, this can suddenly open photography up to a whole different audience? When we first saw the ability to create textures, I mean, there are a number of you know, elements that sprung to mind. You know, Braille was the first one because these devices and technologies had already been used for signage. And so, you know, immediately Braille in, in, in the sense of that type of accessibility was an immediate one. But then it's also been used for other purposes to create you know, textured surfaces that simulate, you know, interior decor, for example. But I remember many years ago, one of the first projects we did with this was with the Edvard Munch Museum in Oslo in Norway. 
and we created for for children at that time textured replicas of the Edvard Munch uh, works of art. And what's really important, if you're recreating a fine art image, which is you know an oil painting in that in that case, just texturing the surface to mirror what the real artwork was, you're just you're just looking at paint blobs. So, so what became apparent was the need to be able to elevate the print that helped tell the story, that told the story of the landscape or the characters in a particular in a particular painting. And we've then developed that onwards in exactly the same way that we can now do with, with a photograph. That in the case of of Lawrence Gunther, who you're talking to um, today as well, was able to really feel and 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 sense the texture of the skin of of the rhino that's in in the shot. You know, one of the at that time the last three southern um, white rhinos. And I think it's incredible to be able to then have people to be able to experience and really imagine in a vivid way that scene and you know and to experience it. In you know, it's, uh, it's it's quite incredible. What you're seeing here is very interesting because I have to my left, it's just a shot on the camera, you wouldn't see it here, but I have my uh, Braille embosser, which is a very expensive printer, uh, which comes in at around $6,000, $7,000, depending on the one you buy, and that's in Canada, but of course that can go up to ten, even $15,000. Uh, have you stumbled onto something here that could essentially make this this process of printing, in this case Braille, but also tactile images, bar charts, graphs, uh, images, all of that, C can you do that at a cheaper price? I'm, 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 and I'm talking here about consumers. Yeah, it's something that we, we have more than, I think, 8,000 of the flatbed printers installed around the world. And I think these these types of projects that we do, you know, are fantastic for us to be able to, you know, show the, the cutting edge of some of our technologies. But we also do them to, you know, inspire some of our customers as to ways that they can recreate that in their in their own markets in their own environment so that they too can use the technology that they have to um you know to, to inspire people and to use imaging to transform a world not just in a visual sense but in in this tactile way so you know the devices are very high-end production devices but i think the nature of the number of them installed around the world we certainly hope that this is something that you know printers all over the place will be inspired to think about how they could bring this into into some of the things that they that, that they output yeah, because this could be interesting to other people. I mean, this is what, I, again, I talk about this all the time, but mainstreaming this kind of technology, it, it can only be a good thing. And there's lots of people who may want to create tactile images. I mean, I think about people who print pictures of their pets or people who, you know, take pictures of family members. You know, that touch means everything to lots of people. It doesn't just mean something to blind people. Of course, us as blind people love it too. It, it, it gives us an image in our minds. But... If you can mainstream that, then it brings the overall cost down. Uh, it's not that I'm looking for a cheap printer here, Matthew, you understand. It's just that I, I, I just think, you know, the, the alternatives out there for blind people are so expensive. You might have touched upon something here which could deliver the same kind of experience to blind people as well as others at a reduced cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I certainly hope this is just really a start point to something that this type of technology can be used. And I think the more people use it, the more clever users will experiment and, and innovate in different ways to do it, different materials, you know, faster production processes and, and making it you know, much more available. But I think one of the things that to me has really touched me about this whole this whole project is the uh, with, with the exhibition that we're putting on is not only does that have the ability to experience imagery through through touch but we also at the exhibition have a soundscape we have the kind of braille that tells the story of the image there's the tactile surface so we're trying to find lots of different ways that people can experience this image and really have that vivid um, demonstration in, in their mind but also at the exhibition we're showing the the prints from this range of you know world famous photographers with an overlay on top of, of an acrylic print that actually gives sighted people who are at the exhibition a chance to experience what different types of visual impairments are like, whether it's from something like glaucoma or mm. you know, diabetic retinopathy. 
and and to me that is something that really helps you know bring an appreciation to the 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 different types of, of visual impairment and you know some of the challenges that go with that and to bring a new appreciation but again using imagery there to you know to raise awareness around accessibility the importance of of imagery in that context as well as you know providing this really uh, multi-sensory exhibition using sound and touch uh, as well matthew lawrence gunther aside this we're going to be talking to him what has the response been from visitors to the exhibit so far the, the exhibition actually opens uh, in a few days, uh, opens okay. on the 5th of April to the 7th. But, you know, we've, um, you yeah, know, the, the videos are live on the Canon website now. We have a number of stories, so Lawrence's as well as uh, a, a few others. And, you know, I think I've probably watched the video with Lawrence probably more than 20 times during the production <laughs> process, but also in, in the kind of build up and in the preparations. And I have to say, it gets me, it gets me every time because you know, Lawrence, I don't want to embarrass him, but when, from the moment he's on screen, he strikes me as somebody who is um, incredibly positive and, uh, you know, and he's, he's somebody that you would, you could learn from and spend time with. He's passionate about his, his, his conservation. And I think when you then see him, uh, you know, experiencing the image of the of one of the last three southern white rhino is a topic that he's very passionate about. It's an incredible, and that that level of joy that he already had goes up to number eleven. And I think you can almost see him thinking about all of the possibilities for this. So it's a really powerful film. So they're already on the Canon website. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I can't wait personally for the for the exhibition that starts on the 5th of April at Somerset House because I really want to see both, you know, sighted visitors, you know, seeing and experiencing imagery through uh, through the eyes of, of those partially sighted in different types of visual impairment, but also to see, uh, you know, other people uh, like Lawrence who are experiencing the exhibition through touch and through sound. I think it's going to be really fantastic. So I'm certainly anticipating some some you know fantastic reactions. Are there any plans to expand this, obviously, um, beyond just Europe? Yes, there are, yes. We, in the UK, where Canon Europe is based, we worked very closely with a UK organisation called the RNIB, or the Royal, right. Royal National Institute for the Blind, and they really helped us put on this project and this exhibition in the right way but after the exhibition uh, finishes in london uh, it will be touring around europe and all of the different canon offices in canon countries around europe have their own activations their own exhibitions and they'll also be working with their own local equivalents of the organization that we worked with in the uk so again you know, a way for this to really travel around and to have the maximum impact it can both for local just... audiences, but as I said, also for our local you know, customer and user base who we really want them to pick up this thinking and these ideas and for it to be, you know, a part of uh, not just very special projects like museums where we've replicated paintings of, you know, Vermeer's Girl with the Pearl Earring or the Monk Museum, as I described earlier, but something that really uh, becomes, you know, a core part of how we expect to enjoy imagery. Yeah, and, and you know, it just makes this more accessible to all of us, which is wonderful. I, I do want to ask you, though, Matthew, just on a geeky point before we go, uh, because you're from Canon, I'm guessing you have the best webcam and the best looking setup we've ever had on he this does, TV Stephen, show. He does, <laughs> I was just I was like, what, what are you using? Because I want to know what the I want to know what the pros are using. What have you got in front of you there? Well, I won't tell you. I've spent four hours preparing for this, and, and I can tell you there's no makeup. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I use an EOS an EOS camera, which when you plug it into your laptop. It becomes a, a webcam, and um, yeah, just I've shut the blind behind me. It's, that's about as much as I did. So I rely on Canon technology, of course. But, uh... <laughs> oh, of Matthew, course. Uh, Matthew, uh, thank you for joining us. The website again, canon-europe.com, right? Correct. Yeah, and you'll find there the World Unseen project with all all the videos and all the hub information about the exhibition for those in the UK, but also as it travels around Europe, uh, we'll be we'll be populating that with other other details as well but let us know if you need any connections here in canada to make sure that we uh, get the opportunity for our audience here to check it out as well yeah thank you i definitely will thank thanks so much
So what's it like to experience this new technology and the exhibit? Well, Lawrence Gunther mentioned him several times. He's a host of AMI's original podcast, Outdoors with Lawrence Gunther, conservationist, and he's joining us next here on Access Tech Live as he went hands on. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back.